When asked, so what do you do? Today's guest responds, I keep the ladies happy. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show. Where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, you right there, working out, walking the dog, driving to work, are a motivated business owner, ready to crank out some great marketing. Episode 251, actually, after last week's, or earlier this week's, I should say, extravaganza. Forgot we're going to two episodes a week. Hey, um, today's show, lovingly brought to you by Key Person of Influence, the world's leading business accelerator program for entrepreneurs wanting to become industry thought leaders and a free book giveaway from them later on in the show. Big show today, Fireside Chat with Carl Schwantus, jeweler Carl Schwantus, who's smashing out some very interesting marketing from great customer service experiences to ensuring he's an industry leader and, as I said at the top of the show, keeping the ladies happy. He is Mr Diamond, is Carl. More on him shortly. We'll have a quick check-in. I have an inspiring marketing quote all about the importance of having a RHG, red hot go, and I'll let you in on next week's guest who's selling something with a rather large price tag on it. A price tag I have not seen the size of before. As per usual, there is marketing, G-O-L-D, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reed. that's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. How's business? Time for a little check-in, I think. I'm back from Fiji, and I think I am still on Fiji time. Not my usual up and about self. I didn't get to lock in on Fiji time while I was there. Now that I'm back, I think it's with me. So I'm feeling a little bit slow. Stick with me. Hey, thanks for the feedback on episode 250, which I did record sitting on a beach in Fiji, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Great feedback. Thank you for all the kind words of support and feedback from those of you who do love listening to the show, who have been listening for so long. Uh, It's amazing. If you want to do one thing, pay it forward now, the next 250. Let some other motivated business owners, or maybe not so motivated business owners, know about the show. Um, Home all week, loving that got a big focus going forward. I've got kind of less travel coming up and I'm just kind of going to lock myself away and get some planning done around future episodes, a bit more blogging, social media. Uh, Got loose working away in the background there, You uh, working my buffer. My my tweets are going out left, right and centre. Seeing my followers increase hugely too, thanks to Lucy. Thank you, mate. I know you listen. Uh, And uh, forum, big news in the forum. Lukey is back. My old mate, Lukey. Who's Lukey? He joined me for the first 80 episodes of this show. He was my co-host. He's off now. He's got a wonderful uh, business, Facebook ads business. Plankton.com.au is Lukey's business. He's now a partner with me in the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. So if you've been putting off joining (laughs) because it's just me in there, well, now you've got the brains trust as well. Lukey is a marketing, uh, and I'm not going to say guru because I don't like that word, but he, he's a good fellow. He knows his marketing inside out, loves marketing that is accountable, trackable, loves the numbers, loves getting under the hood. Lots happening there. If you want to join the forum, crankmymarketing.com is where you should head over to. And oh, listen, got to hear, before uh, we finish the check-in, how's this unsubscribe? You know, I send an email out once, every once or twice a fortnight. And uh, when I send an email out, you always get some unsubscribes, you know, they're sick of hearing from you. They're getting too many emails. This one came, I won't say who it's from. I get this email, this lead has unsubscribed. And then it says why. You don't have to say why, but this one chose to, this person chose to. Timbo, You've changed my life. Thanks for all the hard work. Remember, this person's unsubscribed from my list. I still listen religiously and hope to join the forum someday. 
Okay, they've unsubscribed, said farewell to me. But for now, I'm just cleaning up my inbox. Hope you understand. (laughs) I don't know. I saw humour in that. I would have thought that if I've changed their lives and I'm adding value that I wouldn't be part of the inbox cleanup. But hey, that's cool. There's plenty there's plenty of people subscribing every day that don't mind me tarnishing their inbox. You want to get on my list, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and you'll hear from me every now and then with a bit of marketing love. Support for this show comes from Key Person of Influence, the world's leading business accelerator program for those wanting to be an industry thought leader. Their five-step KPI method teaches you how to nail your pitch, publish content, productize your offer, raise your profile, and partner with performers. I asked co-founder Glenn Carlson, what's with the pee fetish? <laughs> oh, yeah, I suppose it is a bit of a fetish, isn't it? But I guess we're just a bit obsessed, you know, fetish obsessions. We're, we're, we're just business geeks, mate. We believe there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur and we're all in. We are just all in. And if we find best practices and ideas as a result of what's working for our clients all around the world, we just want to bring it to people. And so far, the best framework that we've found to be able to do that, to really accelerate that entrepreneurial journey in the shortest time is the five P's. So mate, get in on the fetish. KPI, where fetishes rule. For a free hard or audio copy of their Amazon bestseller, visit keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Oh, and a little warning. Don't read it before bed. You just won't sleep. Hey, that book offer, it is red hot. Take it up. Uh, If you've already got it, grab one and give it to a friend because they will love you forever. That KPI method, amazing. Today's guest... Carl Schwantus, jeweler, jewelry store owner. He's got a shop in Brisbane. He's also the author of a fantastic book, helping blokes choose the ring for their missus, called Rock Her World. Is missus a wrong word? Am I going to get into trouble from that? I don't know. Email me, tim at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Carl is another winner of the KPI Pitch Fest program Uh, uh, last week. Clarissa won it a couple of years ago. Carl, recent winner, he nails his pitch when asked, so what do you do? Generally, though, he is a guy on a mission to make women all over the world very happy. Richard Gere tried to do that in a film once, didn't he? American Jiggle? I don't know. Can't remember. Hey, uh, listen in for some insights around memorable customer experience creation, the power of finding your intersection, a whole new concept we've not spoken about on the, on the show before, but a great marketing concept is this thing called the intersection. Carl has a great question. He and his staff continually ask themselves. Uh, you're going to love that one. Power of partnerships you'll discover in this episode as well. I started off by asking Carl, why? A diamond's a girl's best friend. Well, I, I think uh, a lot of times when I talk to a guy and they, they don't really understand what the whole diamond thing is. Mate, we've got no idea. No idea whatsoever, but you've only got to see the look in your partner's eyes when you give her that diamond for the first time to really see what it truly means to her. Really? Absolutely. It's, it's much better, it's much more companionship than, uh, than your best mate, the dog, will ever give you. <laughs> I'll have to try that out. I don't know how often you've listened to the show, but I do love being seeded by uh, people's products and services. Uh, P.O. Box 989, Mount Eliza, Victoria. Send me a ring, Carl, and I'll try it on my beautiful wife, Sophie. It sounds like it, sounds like it could be a plan. All we just need to do is work out the uh, exchange part of the, uh, the credit card oh, details. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, he's good. Hey, now, Carl, you said to me uh, last week, week, the first 21 years of your business life, you were going through the motions. It was like Groundhog Day. Mate, tell me about that extended period of time. Well, I I guess uh, I I just got caught up in doing what it is that I do every day, I think, as a lot of business owners do. And uh, while I just... I just loved what I was doing. I guess I found I wasn't really getting the traction that I was I was hoping. I guess in my mind, I'd, I'd always seen, you know, big goals and big future ideas, but it just kind of wasn't getting any closer to where I was hoping to be. What were you actually doing? Like, what were the jobs with it? Because it's just a long time, like 21 years. Yeah, I mean, I've done, a, I guess I've done a lot in my life leading up to where I am now. I spent 10 years in the military as an artillery captain. Uh, I did a science degree at the University of Queensland. So I was kind of always multitasking a little bit uh, rather than necessarily specialising as much as what I would like to have. 
But, uh, you know, I spend some time on the bench making rings for clients and, uh, and I would obviously spend time, you know, serving them in the shop. But I think what I was really missing was, was that whole leverage gear and uh, being able to maximise the, the, the unique offerings that I had uh, to a larger audience. Yeah, right. So jewellery has an uh, – interesting because you, very early on in your, your career, like I think when you were 16, you were working with master jewellers in Germany. Uh, so you kind of got an early taste of it but you haven't been in jewellery all your life. Well, I mean, my parents, uh, my father uh, became a jeweller in Germany uh, when, he was, when he was just a boy. And I think it's one of those things that uh, as, as someone who grew up in a family business, I, I think you just get immersed around it. Uh, so it was always, you know, at the dinner table while we were talking, you know, there was always things about the business that we were, we were discussing. And my dad would have a workshop that I would, you know, as a young kid wander in and, and see dad working away there. And I think that's uh, mm. for a small kid that always, you know, forms an, a strong emotional attachment to what you're doing. Tell me about then uh, at the end of that 21-year period, what, what was the game changer for you? When, what flicked the switch? Uh, it was actually uh, in Brisbane. I went along to a, uh, a brand accelerator uh, day run by the, uh, the key, people of inf- key person of influence and I listened to a, a great man who, uh, who's well known to you, Andrew Griffiths. Oh, Griffo. He gets and- mentioned too much on this show, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he said, you know, like everybody has a book inside of them. And I thought, oh, I'd always thought that I, I wanted to write a book. I just didn't know how to go or, or where to start or who to talk to. And, and that was the kind of real light bulb moment for me because I thought, well, I could, I could write this book. And then, you know, again, that, that whole leverage thing, I could, I could help more people by giving, giving this book out. Mm-hmm. Interesting because um, a, a past guest of mine, Keith Abraham, talks about how one day he, many decades ago, that dates him, uh, he, was a, he was a noxious weed inspector at the local council. Uh, he was sent to a personal development day, of which he'd been to quite a few, but it was at that moment in time where someone on stage said something that hit him between the eyes. And um, it sounds like that's what happened with you because I, I know those KPI brand accelerator days and they came cover more than just publishing but for you was that just your epiphany it really was and and, and since having published my uh, first book uh, which is rock her world great name i've now got in my mind at least three other books that i want to write so i've really kind of caught the bug uh, from it wow wow i want to talk about the book shortly because that's uh, that's a big marketing play for you uh, and i know you've had some success with it not only in you know, i'm guessing sales but it generating and building your personal brand generating media coverage etc but you um, you're someone carl that is very very strong on your why you've really uh, you're really comfortable with it and you've nailed it do you want to explain the concept of why to our listeners and share yours yeah, I think it's it's been one of those things, uh, like you said, over the 21 years, I think I was always missing. I, I, I thought I kind of knew what my why was, but I, I wasn't, it was kind of like it was fuzzy. And uh, I think it was a combination of a lot of things. Uh, number one was to find out, you know, like that really what they call that true intersection between your two greatest values. And the other one was, was listening to a lot of the Simon Sinek stuff about, mm. you know, what your why is. And it took me a little while to kind of really na- nail down exactly what that was. So. Okay, so keep your powder dry then because there's a couple of big concepts here. This, this intersection concept, which, you know, listeners understand this. This is powerful. Uh, and then there's the why concept, which, which would come first, Carl. Let's, let's, let's look at both. For, for me, the big, the big light bulb stuff was the intersection. Okay. So what is, what is this intersection concept about? So what it is, it's kind of looking back over your life and, and finding out when you were the most happiest, what, what were the, the two main, I guess, key things that were happening in, in your life? Uh, so for me, the two things that I found at every point in my life where I was the most happy is, is I was creating something around an amazing experience and I was dealing with something that was beautiful or a luxury item. Beautiful. So for me, for, for me, the intersection where I'm most happiest is when I'm creating amazing experiences for my clients and it's around beautiful products. Love it, mate. I want to talk about those amazing experiences because, you know, that's, that's, that's big time. But uh, Steve Jobs' why, I think, was uh, he found the intersection between um, design and technology. And you can say that's a beautiful way where you see it come to life through Apple products where they're beautifully designed but they're high in technology. So it's a great thing to do. So you, you found your intersection, then 
you've identified your why. What's your why? So I really love just creating phenomenal experiences uh, around clients' jewellery that celebrates a special moment in their life, you know, so whether that's wedding, engagement or birth of a child. Yeah, great. In fact, I think you've summarised it in three short words, isn't it? Making women happy? Ma- yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the short barbecue pitch, isn't it? <laughs> I love that because that could go either way. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, it definitely always prompts people to say, so what do you really do? Yeah, and, and, there, and there is the power of getting clear on your why, huh? Yep. No, I've really, I've really enjoyed that journey and, and it really has been a journey to find out what my why is. I had a guest on the show recently who you know, Clarissa Raywood from the Happy Family Lawyer, uh, who won Pitch Fest for, KPI, for the KPI program uh, at a point in time, you've won it too. I mean, this we, we, we're amongst royalty here, Carl. This is extraordinary. So when you're at the barbecue and you may have already – do you have an extended pitch? When someone says, hey, Carl, what do you do? Is there that extended pitch beyond making women happy? Well, yeah, usually I put it on the tagline there, you know, with beautiful diamonds and engagement rings because it really kind of solidifies for them what it is that I do. But sometimes I say to the guys, you know, if, if you think that you're happy in your marriage now, and this could apply to you, Timbo, <laughs> if you think that you're happy in your marriage now, you don't know how happy you could be if you bought your wife a diamond. Love it. Love it. Uh, because on the assumption that, you know, you could easily just be the guy who provides newlyweds or newly engaged with diamond rings, you're, you're, you're covering us too. You're covering the old blokes. Yeah, it's, it's really kind of almost like you said before, like that Disney side of things. It's, it's, you're in the happiness industry. Uh, now, mate, uh, that Disney thing, creating happiness, uh, creating amazing customer experiences, how do you go about creating an amazing customer experience? I think really for me, it comes down to a number of different things. I, I think I've always been a, a true romantic and a traditionalist at heart. So it's, it's something that really comes quite naturally to me. But I kind of developed a framework ar- around it and it's something that I teach to my staff and I call it my gift framework. So the gift framework is really what I love for my clients. And the first thing is G, which is to have a client greeted within five seconds of entering the store. I is to be introduced to them warmly and a handshake if it's appropriate. F is to find out their story. Why are they here? Where are they at in their journey? And and what is it that you can do to help them? But my favorite is the letter T, which is called transform their experience. And that's all about having them leave happier than when they came. You know, it's all about the surprise and delight. And the one thing that I always try and do is to try and give a client something that they didn't think that they could ask for. And for me, when you can do that, it's an absolute game changer. Give me an example of that. That's cryptic. Uh, by the way, love. I, I don't normally love acronyms, but I'm loving GIFT. So well done on that. That, that cryptic one. So client, give a client something that they didn't think they could ask for. Yeah. So, you know, I had a client who came in, a couple, they came in uh, one day and uh, the guy just wandered over to the couch and he sat down, you know, completely disinterested. <laughs> yeah. I think that was me. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. And his partner gravitated towards the diamond counter as, as they normally tend to do. Mm. And I could see the guy was just completely disengaged and he was sitting down. So I went up to him and I said, mate, you look like you've been dragged here kicking and screaming. And he said, yep, pretty much. And I said, you look like... I said, well, how many of these stores have you been to? And he said, look, this is the fifth one. Oh. Now, if you do the math, that's about five hours of jewellery store shopping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel his pain. And I said, mate, you look like you could do with a drink. And he said, mate, could I ever? I said, would you like one? And he said, well, yeah. So I went and got him a a beer because that's what he asked for. And like the look on his face, like I just gave him something that he didn't think that he could ask for walking into a jewelry store. He got up off the couch, came over and joined his partner at the counter. And, you know, about 45 minutes later, they walked out with an engagement ring. But it wasn't just about what I did for him there. It's also about what would he tell all his friends when he left? (laughs) Yeah. I went to five other stores and this one store, the guy really took the time to get to know me and did something for me that nobody else was prepared to That's do. That's gold. And you know what, Carl? Great opportunity right there uh, for a bit of word of mouth, which would be, hey, listen, mate, while you are waiting for your wife and you're enjoying the beer, do you mind putting a photo on Facebook? Bit of a selfie? Yeah, guys are less likely to do that than the girls. Yeah, True. True. But I like where you're going. Yeah, thank you very much. Love that. Mate, that is clever. I love – what a great question to ask. Like, 
all listeners right now, put that into your little journal of questions to ask ask clients, you know. What are they afraid to ask for that they don't think they could get here? Uh, when you said it, I thought that was going to be kind of some big things, but that's so beautifully small and elegant and has changed that guy's day. Yeah, and, it, and there, I mean, there are many different other examples, but when I'm with a client... One more, one more. Come on, I love them. So uh, I had another client just recently that was buying some wedding day diamonds. Now, for the guys out there that don't know what wedding day diamonds are, it's the first diamonds that you buy for your wife on their wedding day. And he came in to buy that and I could have just stopped there, but I wanted to create an amazing experience, not just for him, but for her as well. And I said to him, I said, look, what we're going to do is we're going to write a note and put it on the inside of the box. So it's kind of like that pass the parcel sort of thing, you know, as he's unwrapping, she's unwrapping the present, she sees the note. And I could have done that, left it there, and that would have been great for him. But I said, I want to create an amazing experience, not just for you, but for your future wife. So I said, let's, let's get the bridesmaid involved, or the chief bridesmaid, and let's find out where she's going to be on the day and make sure that we can make the whole presentation of it really memorable and special. But we need to do it before she puts her makeup on because otherwise she's going to cry and that's just going to ruin everything for her. Brilliant. Brilliant. Do he look at you and go, you're a genius. Well, it's, well it's, it's, you know what I love to – I always say to the guys, like, I don't want to take any credit. I want you to be the hero yeah. in your partner's yeah. eyes because ultimately if I make him the hero, you know, that's going to create that, that lasting bond between me as his jeweller and, and him the client. You and I share a similar philosophy. When I was working in a large advertising agency many years ago, the owner came up and he said, Tim, don't forget, mate, you are here to make the clients famous which was really quite deep because, you know, A, as a young bloke, I thought I was there to make advertising uh, and B, if I did have an idea, then it was my idea, not the client's. But no, 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 you're there to make the client famous and, and likewise you are too. Absolutely. Love it, mate. So now listen, let's keep going because you you, I know you've got some other wonderful marketing plays that you're into. You're into partnerships. I want to just touch on the book, Rock Her World. I, I am always in awe of business owners who – go off and write a book, what Andrew Griffiths calls a glorified business card. Um, tell us about that process. It was actually surprisingly easier than I thought it would be. Really? It, re- it really was. And, and I often say, like, I've, I've got four kids. I've got three nine-year-olds and a, and a 10-year-old. And I'll, every night just between the hours of like 8.30 and 10.30 after we'd put the kids to bed, made all the lunches for the next day, I would just sit down at my computer every night for two hours and, and write. And sometimes I could write... A 1,000 words, sometimes 2,000 words in that time. But it was just kind of almost like just getting all of that knowledge in my head down on paper. And it was actually almost cathartic. I I actually really enjoyed the whole process. Yeah, okay. So it's all there. That's the wonderful thing, isn't it? I mean, as a specialist, you're you're a jeweler, you're a diamond guy. You are. You are standing on a mountain of knowledge. So for you, it was just this, oh, like finally, I'll get it out. You must have felt a a whole lot lighter. I I did. And like I said, I enjoyed the whole process in my book, uh, and this is something that I don't often tell people, so I'm, I'm sure you'll just keep it to yourself, Tim. Yeah, yeah, no one listens, mate. Go for it. It's you and I. Uh, inside my book, I actually interwove a story about Tom and Mary. And the, the fun part for me about the, the story of Tom and Mary is it's actually myself and my wife. But I, you know, changed it and, and interwove. So I was telling my story throughout the book, which I, I actually really enjoyed that part of the writing process as well. Ah, any little secrets revealed that your wife's read and gone, Carl, you can't tell them that. No, no. I, I think, uh, you know, it's it's subtle enough to, for people to get the message about the learning concepts without going into too much detail. <laughs> into the nitty gritty. Yeah. Now, I know another part of you going through the Key Person of Influence program was um, partnerships. You've, you've had an epiphany around publishing, but you've really taken partnerships to another level from what I understand because before you tell us who you've developed partnerships with and what they are, you know, you, you are a retail jeweller in Queen Street Mall in Brisbane. You know, you're a shop owner. Yeah, you've gone and developed some partnerships with some some big players, yeah? Absolutely. And and before doing KPI, I just didn't have the confidence, I felt anyway, to go and approach these big name brands and ask them to come into partnership. I mean, all the usual business owner self-doubts, like who am I? You know, what do I really have to offer them? And why would they want to actually be in partnership with me? So I, I was struggling with all of those sort of things as well. But I think once once hmm. I had one under my belt, it was so much easier to do the second and the third one. Uh, what, what I love the self doubt thing, mate. Gosh, I mean, what business, small business owner listening hasn't got that? And we've got to remind ourselves just how powerful we are and how much we do know. 
and flip it. It's not about us anymore. It's about the people that we're trying to help. And that does, that's a lovely mindset shift where it becomes a whole lot easier for you to then go and approach, in this case, some big corporates. So who was it? And, and what is the partnership? What does the partnership involve? So again, this was the kind of the epiphany that came out of finding out what my intersection was, because then it made it very easy to go and find out who I should approach for a partnership. But what it really came about creating that amazing experience is, and I thought, well, these days, who writes handwritten thank you notes? I think it's, it seems to be a lost art these days. And we do it for our clients, but I don't think many businesses do. And I thought, well, how can I make my partners that I choose to go into partnership with look great in the eyes of their clients? So I developed a, a small product, which was a, a gift card to be used into our store that was really professionally presented and gave the opportunity for the salesperson, whoever that was, to actually personally thank their clients in a handwritten format. And then when I went to them, I spoke to them about it and I sort of said, look, this is what I, I, would, I love doing for our clients and I know that the service level of what you guys are doing is, is something amazing too. So the first person that I went to was uh, BMW, mm. um, partly because I drove a BMW, but it's also because I'd experienced firsthand what their service was like, what their team was like, and I just thought it was a beautiful fit between what we do. And are we talking BMW manufacturer or dealership? Uh, BMW as in Brisbane BMW, so it's the local uh, BMW dealership that we have here. And what was your pitch to them? I say that the first thing when you're pitching for a partnership, one of the things that you really want to try and do first is be a client because it's so much easier when you go in there that you've already experienced firsthand what they're doing. You're not an outsider. You're already one of their clients. The second thing is I think it's always great to compliment uh, not only them and what they're doing, but also to find the compliment between your business and, and theirs. So I kind of went in there and I said, look, guys, I'm a client of yours already. I love what it is that you're doing. And I think there's some great similarities between what we're doing. I have this product that I, that I use for my clients and it's, it's really well received by them. And I would like to offer it to you. Obviously, there's absolutely uh, no cost for you. But it's just a nice way that on pickup that you can thank the clients that are purchasing a car from you uh, with a gift into our store. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that they asked me at the time is, which is quite natural in a partnership conversation, is where's the catch or what are the strings? <laughs> um, and and for, what I had to do is to make sure that they felt really comfortable with the fact that if the client came to me, if they sent a client to me, that there was absolutely zero obligation for them to actually spend anything outside of the gift card that we that we were giving them. They could use it on services. They could use it for a purchase if they wanted to. But really our philosophy, so I really kind of went deep into what our philosophy is, is that we really understand that what the lifetime value of a client is. We're not in it for a short-term fix. We're in it for a long-term relationship. And we know that if we look after a client with an amazing experience when they come now, whether they buy anything or not, that's always going to keep them coming back year after year. Love it. They're all in. Yeah, they were, they were definitely in. And of course, once I had the first one, it was much easier to go for the second one. The second one that I approached was the flight centre. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's a very difficult uh, corporate entity to get, a, to get a hold of because they have so many different sub-departments. It's a difficult one to work for, let me assure you. And trying to find the right person to talk to was really quite challenging. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I had my book launched. That, that, that's on purpose, by the way. They don't have a reception. Wow. So I had my book launch, which I, I, I did on Valentine's Day. And what I did is I reached out to the flight centre and said, look, guys, I'm a client of yours already, which I was. And I said, I really love the stuff that you're doing. I love the, you know, the brand and, and everything that you stand for. And I have a book launch coming up. And I think there's a great complement between our businesses for people that are buying engagement or wedding rings that are looking to either propose overseas or maybe get their wedding rings and go on a honeymoon. Yeah, right. And I said, I would love to offer you the opportunity to, to market your brand to my clients in the room. So at that point, I actually asked for nothing. I was actually only giving. So I was giving them the opportunity to be to exposed to a bigger market and, and they were more than happy to do that. And it was the follow-up that happened after the event where I kind of pitched the idea of going into a more solid partnership with them. Love it. And it, keeps the, it just keeps going because now you've got BMW and Flight Centre. To be able to quote those to go and find your next partner and the fourth one, you know, it becomes a whole lot easier. It, it really does. It's, and it's not just because you have that sort of brand association, but I think you just get better at it the more that you do and you learn things from the journey as you do it and you just refine that for the next one that you go in. 
Carl, one of the things that's come your way as a result of, you know, publishing these wonderful joint ventures, the finding your why, becoming a real spokesperson in the jewellery industry, of which, I don't know, I'm guessing, you know, you're, you're pioneering in a way. You've got a lot of media coverage. Um, how have you gone about that and what's it done for your business? Well, a lot of the media coverage that I have, I was very fortunate to um, to be co- uh, connected with Sam Elam and she helped me uh, establish the connections that I didn't have in the media world. Uh, and in the media, I learned so much about going through that process. It's really about who you know, not what you know in, the, in, that, in those circles. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the things that I'd actually planned for the book launch didn't actually come off at that time, but they came off subsequently after that. Yeah, right. And they were things like, uh, getting a spot on Studio 10, which is a national TV show, uh, and also a joint promotion with the Sunday Mail, which was syndicated Queensland-wide. So, again, you know, fantastic exposure there. Mate, how good is that? And and Sam is a uh, is a friend of the show. She's actually a member of uh, the Small Business Big Marketing Forum and kindly responds to any publicity or PR questions people have because you're right. It is uh, who you know in that industry. And and I think once, and Clarissa Raywood was the same, you know, once you kind of um, appear and prove that you know what you're talking about, you're then on that producer's list or that journalist's list for when they want an opinion around your industry. So expect more of it, huh? Well, it's, it was it was definitely uh, it was definitely an exciting and exhilarating experience. But it's one of those things that you really just have to lean in uh, because it can be quite nerve wracking and easy to pull away. But you've just got to really push ahead. Totally, totally. Someone has to be the most helpful in your industry, Carl. It may as well be you, as I say, mate. Loving your work. Uh, what is? If you got a marketing play that's bubbling away that kind of scares you. Uh, well, I've started to do a lot more keynote speaking of recent times. Oh, here we go. So that that has been kind of, again, it's one of those things, The more you really have to kind of put yourself in, into it. And I guess the first couple that I did, it's now becoming a little bit more easier and I'm feeling a little bit more uh, comfortable in the way I do it. In the beginning, I used to script it to an inch of its life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now I find that I just need to trust the fact that I, I do know what it is that I'm talking about and, mm-hmm. and just trust myself uh, to kind of go with that. And the nice thing is now it's actually, you know, relating into people actually approaching me to come and speak at events. I even got offered uh, last week to MC an event, which I've, again, never done before. But, uh, you know, of course, when they asked me, I said, absolutely, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> so that's, that, was a, that was a massive lean in. That's for the uh, Women's Lawyers Association of Queensland uh, Awards Night Dinner. Brilliant. Yep, should be a lot of fun. Well, you know, like it is nerve-wracking. Uh, may you never lose the nerves around keynote speaking because they, they make you bring your A game. Um, and again, I, I find personally, you know, like I've given my current keynote, my most popular keynote, I've delivered well over 100 times in the last 12 months. And wow. I'm now, like I can, I can honestly say just in the last maybe 10 times, I'm, I'm just... I've I've gone to another level. It doesn't mean the first 90 were crook. It's amazing how just with that practice and getting comfortable, you then find ways of playing with your message, um, leaving your script and having some fun with it, um, bringing the audience in as much as you can. And um, the more you do, the more you'll just love it. Uh, it is a little bit addictive for the old ego, keynote speaking. Well, that's it's good to know. So uh, <laughs> at least on the right track. <laughs> correct, correct. Hey, Carl, love your work, mate. I love how much you have embraced this in an industry that is, as I said, you know, there's a whole lot of people just maybe stuck in, in, in Groundhog Day like you were in the early days, opening the shop doors, selling a few pieces of jewellery, shutting the door and heading home, whereas you're really starting to expand your thinking around what's possible as being a diamond guy. So well done, mate. Thanks a lot, Timbo. Really enjoyed it. Right, team, I hope you enjoyed that fireside chat with jeweller extraordinaire Carl Schwantis, brought to you by the very good folk at the Key Person of Influence Business Accelerator. You've got to read the book. Head over to keypersonofinfluence.com.au forward slash Timbo and you'll get a free copy of it, a hard copy. My top three, thanks to Carl. My top three learnings, I should say, thanks to Carl. Oh, by the way, hit Carl up on Twitter. Why? I think that's funny because he's very inactive on Twitter, but he's got a Twitter account and this may push him to become active. His Twitter handle 
at Carl, K A R L, underscore Schwantus, C H, start again, S C H W A N T E S. Confused? Good. And my top three learnings. Number one, get clear on your why. And whilst you're doing it, find your intersection. Hope you enjoyed that little marketing theory. Number two, continually ask the question, how can I give a client something they didn't think they could ask for? What a great question. Giving the bloke a beer while he's sitting in the jewellery store waiting for his wife. (laughs) He is now a happy man. Number three, offer amazing customer experiences. And if that means creating an acronym (laughs) like Carl's G-I-F-T, love an acronym, then so be it. Great customer experiences, I've got to say, are very shareable and very memorable. A great way to create a point of difference in your marketing. Actually, I've got a number four. Yep, can't help it. Normally top three, but number four because the people at KPI just just push me that little bit further. Power of partnerships. Respect just how powerful you doing a partnership with another business can be as a way to leverage yourself and your business. Who could you partner up with that could just, you know, take your exposure and your marketing to the next level? Hope you enjoyed that. They are my top four learnings. Thanks to Carl and KPI. Lee Clow once said, I'd rather apologise than to be so timid as to never try to do anything smart or brave. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Got some great feedback, ooh, about a month ago now, from a listener. Her name, Lucy Singer. You listening, Luce? I hope so. She says she's from a business called Historical, like history, but with an I, cool.com.au. She says, hey, Timbo, my boyfriend and I have been listening to your show since the Noodle Box episode back in Lukey days, and we've been hooked ever since. That's episode 46. That's like five years ago, Luce. Loving your work already. We both own small businesses, and your podcast has been amazingly helpful. It's always comforting to hear your interviewees talk about overcoming similar struggles to what we have both faced and are currently facing. I think, Luce, there is great comfort in hearing from others. It's a major reason why I do this show because, you know, hearing other people's stories, hearing the challenges that they're facing, how they overcame them, you know, we're, we're all not that different, you know. Some people just have a go. Others sit back and watch, listen. You're having a go. Luce goes on to say, back in 2013, having just started Historical, my educational history magazine for Aussie kids, I remember hearing you talk about how you wanted to get seated. I love getting seated. And I couldn't wait to one day get Historical into your into your hands, even though your kids might be a little too old. Oh, well, that's all right. Still a lovely magazine. Looking at it right now, flicking through pages. Oh, yeah. Uh, Luce goes on to say... Uh, chuffed that you've had the opportunity to see the fruit of a business that wouldn't be here today without the wisdom you've shared on small business big marketing. Luce, well done. It's just a great outcome. (laughs) It really is. I am proud to have contributed to what is a magazine that's going to help young Aussie kids understand a bit more about the past. My kids say I'm trapped in the past. About 1983, 84, sort of, you know, pseudo-echo, spandau ballet, bit of Duran Duran. That's life. I love history, particularly the 80s. Welcome to a small business marketing show. Plenty of marketing gold coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, Next week, how's this? I speak to a Texas real estate agent who's selling a ranch that's bigger than New York City and LA combined with a price tag of... $725 $725 million. <laughs> You're going to find out how he got that listing and how on earth you sell something that expensive. Like, where are those buyers? Grab your free hard copy or audio copy of KPI's Amazon bestseller over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, then join the forum because that's Lukey and I inside the forum tackling your marketing questions. Head over to crankmymarketing.com right now. And if you've got a conference coming up, book me. I love a chat, love speaking from stage. I come fresh with a made fresh daily guarantee. All's good. 
Enough. I'm rambling. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. May your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now.